We have had so many requests, and I, I really want Arthur to hear this one in case he hasn't, but so many of you said, please, have Candy sing that beautiful song she sang last night, Sin Doesn't Live Here Anymore. So if the sound man will get that up, could you do it for us real quick? Take just a minute, darling, and tell us again so many folks will be seeing you for the first time, especially up in the great Seattle, Tacoma, Washington area. Give a little word of testimony on how Jesus saved you changed your whole life oh, around. For 13 years, I was a rhythm and blues entertainer. And I went all over the world, had gold records and everything. I guess everything the world wants, I had it. But it didn't fulfill me. You see, the world looks at what you've got. And they don't see what we have. And I have found something that I had been looking for in the bottle, I had been looking for on stages. I had looked for in limousines and, and leather coats and fur coats and what have you and jewelry. It's not there. Amen. I can save you the trouble tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you where it is. It's in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He is Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Kevin Downs. I don't know who you are. I just want to say a pleasant good morning to one and all. Coming out of the voice of Kevin Downswell. Coming out. God is speaking. I see you wondering why me in the midst of your adversity. 
Good morning to all my peeps, wherever you may be this morning, whether you're listening to me from your cell phone or the radio, or you may be just be on the internet. I want to say bless up yourself. Have a wonderful day. I will take you over. I will take you over. I will never leave. To you I will please. I'm standing right there in the midst of... Of course, we're having a little rain on the outside, but still we pray, still we worship. To me, my son, it's already done. It's already done. The victory is won. It's already done. If you have been blessed by this ministry, we would like to give you the opportunity to partner with us and help us in sharing the cost to win the loss. To send your gift or offering, Please call us at 583-4479 or email us at vsharpmiller at gmail.com. Do you have or are you seeking a place to rent, seeking employment or have a job vacancy? Are you selling a car or having a garage sale? Then come see us. Let Styles do the advertising for you and you'll be on your way in no time. Contact us at 876-286-9216 or 439-5160. Advertising Style. Advertise with Styles. Lighting My World with Victoria Sharp Miller. This and every Sunday morning at 6 a.m. It is a program to enlighten the understanding of Christians and non-Christians and bring people to a clearer knowledge of God. So, Bossy, what's your problem? Boy, I'm not a problem, you know. <laughs> Well, you see, I'm going tell you if you up on Pan Styles 2014 calendar, you make him miss you. Make sure you make the 2015 one miss you again, you know, bossy. You know, see, all last year, them hype up the sponsors, them, with interviews and non-stop big ups in December. Next year, I come soon, you know. And me, say Styles, I hope the thing. Call them, no man. Because spots limited. 876-439-5160. 876-439-5160. Our email, info at stylesfm.com for more information. Do we know, bossy? You know what? I am going to call them right now. You're tuned into Light in My World.
course, we have three segment lineup for you this morning. Right now, we are in our first segment, which is praise and worship. At this time, we invite you to call or text in with your prayer requests, of course. And we'll touch heaven with you, of course. We will touch and agree, breaking those things that want to keep your bondage. Also, after which we have the word of God coming to you live from Styles FM Radio. Mr. Madge, go get Tashana Blackwell for me. And of course, you have tuned into Styles FM Radio. You can also be on the go. And these are the on the go numbers if you want to be listening to Styles on the road, in your car, wherever. What you just need to do is pick up your cell phone. If you are inside the USA, you can reach us at you can reach us at 213-992-4360. That is if you are in the USA. If you are in the United Kingdom and you want to have us live on your cell phone, the number to do so is 033-0010-3322. That's 033-0010-3322. And again, if you're in Canada or the USA, you can also call this number. It's 954-338-7973. If you want to, to call us live on the telephone, the number to do so is 453-1444. Send a text to us or to make a telephone call locally, 453-1444. Yeah, yes, you are. Yes, you are. I don't know about y'all tonight. <laughs> but you deserve the glory. Can we just get deep with the king and tell him who he is this morning? Can we just lift up our voice and give praise unto the king of kings? Surely no one else deserves our praise. No one else in the world, no one else, nothing that you have, love or cherish, deserve to be more praised than this king. Hands in worship, and I bless your holy name, cause you are Caller, you're live. Good morning. Hello, good morning. How are you doing, sir? Not too bad. I'm just going to take a good life easy and a rough life so far, you know, so good. Oh. This is your program. Okay. Mr. Courtney calling from outside the UK. Yes. So how is the UK I'm this still, morning? I'm still not getting a job yet, you know. I'm still not getting a job. Okay, so how is the UK this morning? Is it cold? Is it warm? How is it? Very, very, very cold. Very windy. Okay, so you have to have on a whole so, lot of gears. Yes, because the time changing is like daylight like seven times, but the time change. So it's very dark now in the morning? No, no, no. It's two o'clock. When it reach two o'clock, it's night in it. Come down, two o'clock, night. Two o'clock in the day? Yeah, two o'clock in the day, night come down. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> That's England, you know, like day, like same thing, like back home, you know? Okay, okay. So you're all right otherwise, though? Well, so far, so good, you know. You know, just, me just I look some job, you know. I'm not getting enough money as yet, you know? Well, we pray you get some job soon, Mr. Courtney, and have a blessed day. Yeah, you sent me as well, yeah? All right, sweetheart.
<laughs> you know, sister chicken come fit you quick. <laughs> right now we are send it back to the pit of hell with light in my roll and 96.1 FM. Sister Victoria, SSBG representing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Thank you. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Can we just worship the King? Because of who you are, I give you praise. Of course, we want to laud Him. We want to adore Him. We want because to bless Him this morning. Who you are. I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Surely he is great, and so we know that he is creator. Above all else, he is God. And so because of that this morning, I worship him. Because he is my creator, because he is the one who made me, I lift my voice this morning and tell him how worthy he is. This moment I want to make some kingdom decree and I want to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit that is inside of me to come upon me and to flow throughout my audience wherever you may be this morning if you have tuned in live to Stars FM radio listening to the program light in my world remember this is Victoria coming to you live from Stars FM of course your kingdom come oh God your will be done let your kingdom advance and be established through preaching, teaching, and healing. Let the gates of my life and city be open for the King of glory to come in. Lord, you reign. You are clothed with majesty and strength. Your throne is established of old. You are from everlasting. Lord, you are great, a great king above all gods. Let the heathen hear that the Lord reign this morning. Lord, you reign. Let the people tremble. Let the earth be moved. Lord, you have prepared your throne in the heavens, and your kingdom rules over all. Let man bless the Lord in all places of his dominion. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endure throughout all generations. Let man speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. Let men know your majesty, your mighty act, and the glorious majesty of your kingdom. Let your kingdom come through deliverance. Let the gospel of the kingdom be preached in my region with signs and wonders following. Father, I receive the kingdom because it is your good pleasure to give it to me this morning. Let the righteousness, peace, and joy of the kingdom be established in my life. Let the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of our Lord and of our Christ. Let the saints possess the kingdom. Overthrow the thrones of the wicked kingdoms. Preserve me unto your heavenly kingdom. Let the scepter of your kingdom be released. I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things are added unto me. Break in pieces and consume every demonic kingdom that resists your kingdoms. That, that resists your dominion. Let all dominions serve and obey you, O oh Lord. And then so we bless the Lord this morning. In the meantime, I want to make a declaration because the, we understand that the gates of hell, they are mad. Every time I come on Styles FM, the gates of hell is worried. They are always worried, trying to get me down. But guess what? The gates of hell cannot, will not prevail against me. And so this morning, Lord, teach my hands to war. 
and my fingers to fight. Lord, I am your end time warrior. Use me as your weapon against the enemy. The weapon of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds. Satan, you have lost the war in heaven. Let all the enemies that make war with the Lamb be destroyed this morning. I do not war after the flesh, but after the spirit. Lord, thunder upon the enemy. Release your voice, hailstone and coals of fire. Send out your arrow and scatter them. Shoot out your light and discomfort them. Deliver me from my strong enemy, from them that are too strong for me. Deliver me and bring me into a large place. I am your battle axe and weapon of war. You have given me the neck of my enemies, and I will destroy them in the name of Jesus. I am your anointed, and you gave me great deliverance. I will beat them small as the dust and cast them out as mire in the streets. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. I did not turn until they were consumed. I have wounded them and they are not able to rise. They have fallen under my feet. I tread upon the lion and the other, the young lion and the dragon I trample underfoot. I tread upon serpents and scorpions. I and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. I tread down the wicked. There are ashes under my feet. I will arise and thresh and beat the enemy into pieces. I rebuke every wild boar of the field in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every spirit that creep forth from the forest. I rebuke every beast of the forest that comes to devour. I rebuke every lion of the forest that come to slay. I close the door to every demonic rot that would attempt to come into my life in the name of Jesus. I bind and cast out every thief that would try to steal my finance in the name of Jesus. I bind and cast out any spirit that would try to steal my joy in the name of Jesus. I bind and expose and cast out any demons that would try by steal it undetected to come into my life. Lord, cleanse my temple and drive out any thief from my life. Lord, lift up a standard against any flood the enemy would try to bring into my life. I bind and cast out all familiar spirits that would try to operate in my life in the name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke any demon that would try to block my way in the name of Jesus. my way. You're the pilot light. The nights are long and cold In sadness You are the laughter That scatters all my fears When I'm all alone Your hand is there To hold, 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 hold. Can we tell the king this morning just who he is? This one's a good morning, Sister Miller. Can you please pray for me, Sandra? So I can get a job, so I can take care of my children. And can you also pray for my daughter, Venille, and my son, Ivani? Father, this morning we lift up this family to you, God. We thank you, Almighty God, that without you, we are nothing, but with you we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so, Lord and Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. But most of all, we come in this morning with thanksgiving. Why we thank you, Almighty God, we know, Almighty God, that Jesus Christ has already finished all that mankind of need of for life and godliness. Yes, over 2,000 years ago, he went to the cross, hallelujah, and he shed his blood. He gave up his life as a ransom that today we can come in to cry, Abba, Father. And so this morning, Almighty God, I bless you. I thank you. I honor you. I praise you. I give you thanks, my Father, for the wonderful things that we have through Christ Jesus. And so it is, Almighty God, here is this family. Here is Venil. Here is Tavarani. 
I pray for them this morning, Almighty God, and I lift them up to you. Father, you know why you place them into the earth for such a time as this. You know your intent. You know your purpose. It's not even about them, Almighty God. And so because it's not even about them, if they would just surrender, if they would just be led of you, Almighty God, then everything that you plan for their life will come to pass. And so I pray against everything that would blind their minds, blind their eyes, that keep them out of your presence this morning. And I command the enemy to loose them in the mighty name of Jesus. I command, Almighty God, that they will be led of you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Almighty God, and I release the blood of Jesus over those children right now. Father, I release life to the mother. I release peace to the mother. And I release order in their lives. Father, even as she search for employment, I thank you, Almighty God, as you make it possible for her. Father, I pray, Almighty God, that as you make it possible for her, she will see and understand that you are the way maker. She will see and understand that you are the blesser. She will see and understand that there is none like you. And she will be led to glorify you and give her life to you. Father, I lift you up this morning for all that you have done that you are going to be manifesting in these lives. In Jesus' name. Follow your life. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Sister Vic. How are you, the Sister Garden? Well, I forgive God, thanks in spite of everything. I lost, my nephew lost his wife Friday morning. She was and sick. I'm asking to pray for strength for him. She was He's sick? In, I don't know, what means? Was the wife sick? Yes, he's sick a, a little while. But you have to give that thanks because remember he gave life and he takes it away. Well, he gave life, you know, but it's not he, all the time he takes it away. There are times when the enemy snatch out our life as well, Sister Garden. Yes, yes true, true, that's true. And the Bible said he come to kill, don't it? Yes, ma'am. There are times when he kill and that is not God. True, true, true. All right, so we pray strength for your nephew, okay? Yes, he's Kerry Taylor. He's living in Kingston and the Taylor's family of Cascade. All right, Sister Garden, thanks for calling. Okay, ma'am, have a good day. Same to you, sweetheart. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. You see, there are times if we don't stand strong on our authority, if we are not in, 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 in the boundaries of righteousness, we are, we are protected from the evil one. Then the devil can snatch out with life any time. He set up evil and havoc and roadblock and all kind of something. Because the Bible tells us what he comes to do, you know. The Bible tells us that he's the thief and he comes to steal. He comes to destroy life and he comes to kill. So there are times when you see marriage just pop up and destroy and people they are east and people they are west. It's not that it wasn't the will of God for these people to be together. But the evil one is in the earth and he doesn't like marriages and things that God orchestrated and put together. So he destroy. He's the destroyer of our life and family. He's the one who come and take our life out. Job in his ignorance of course quote that scripture and said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it. But it wasn't the Lord who was taking the things out of his life. It was the enemy. Of course, God allows it at times. But it's not all the time God allows it. But God has given us power over every other power of the enemy. And so if we don't understand how to stand up and demonstrate the power that we have, then surely the devil will steal and ravish our life. So we want to get equipped. We want to get the knowledge of God. And we want to learn how to stand with the authority that Jesus Christ has given to us and march on the enemy and stop him in his track from taking out and destroying and killing. Take us to work, take us on the go, take us wherever you go. Styles FM. my 
myself away I give myself away I want to pick up all my peeps in the USA Can you Big up all my peeps in Canada and in the UK. And of course, right back here in Jamaica, wherever you may be this morning, bless up yourself. Keep it locked to South FM Radio. Don't move the dial an inch because you don't know when we come into this place, we come to shed light. We come to show the nations, the king, the truth, the way, and the light. Now this morning, just keep it locked. I give myself away so you can this one say happy birthday to Chev in Retreat, Brownstone, Big Up, coming from Mark. What would happen if the generation embraced it? This one say good morning, my dear sis Vic. How are you, Antoinette? I think I need a little prayer this morning. Father, we lift up Antoinette to you this morning. And we thank you that you are Lord in her life. Whatever is going on, you are still God. Nothing takes you by surprise. And so this morning, Father, we pray for wisdom. We pray for understanding. We pray for knowledge to come to Antoinette. We pray most of all, Almighty God, for your grace that is keeping her to shine in and to break every forces of darkness. Father, we give you thanks. We pray, Almighty God, for provisions. We pray for open doors. We pray, Almighty God, that you will blow her mind and allow her to see just how much you love her. Allow her to see your glory. Hallelujah. Allow our Almighty God to come to a place where she will know that there is none like you, completely none like you. Not just talk, but from experience. Allow her to experience your glory. That she, nothing will move her. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the life and family of Antoinette this morning. And we thank you for preserving them and keeping them. Father, we lift up Sister Garden and honor never to you this morning again, God. We thank you, Almighty God, that you are still God in spite of any debt or whatever took place. Father God, after all that that person have lost this morning, yet still you are God. Hallelujah. Because you are God alone and there is none like you. And so in spite of what is going on, we give you praise for them. We thank you for strength this morning in Jesus' name. Call her your life. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ronson. Can I get a little prayer, please? Bless you, Denise. Is this Denise? Yes, it is. Okay. Is it there something in, in, in particular that you want me to pray about? Yes, financially. And I, it's like everything I'm getting hit by. All right, financially, sweetheart. Financially, relationship, everything. One time. All right. We'll touch and agree with you, and we know that God is true. Yes. All right, sweetie. Thanks for calling. So, This one's a big up Nadisha coming from Mars. So I'm I'm asking for a special prayer for Lenny, Lenny Moore, Roshana, and other family. And this one's a good morning for from Lenny in St. Thomas. Thanks. Can we just give over self this morning? I don't know the situation that you might be going through and what, uh, what might be happening into your life. But I can say to you, even as you hear the song, the li my life is not my own. Can you just give over self? when you realize that your life is not yours and that your life belongs to God and that is where you place it, then come L-R-I water. No demon, no devil, no nothing can destroy you because you have put yourself in the hands of the Almighty. Of course, it takes you to make that decision. God will not just come and take up everything that you have concerning you until you give it over. And so can we give over this morning? I give myself one more time. Give myself away. I give myself.
yourself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can come on let him know I give myself would happen if the generation embraced this. Come on, tell me. Here I am. Here If you have been blessed by this ministry, we would like to give you the opportunity to partner with us and help us in sharing the cost to win the loss. To send your gift or offering, please call us at 583-4479 or email us at vsharpmiller at gmail.com. Remember Styles FM on social media. View us on YouTube at Styles FM Radio. Follow us on Instagram at Styles FM. Like us on Twitter at Styles FM 961. Become a fan on Facebook, Styles FM 96.1. You can't afford to miss it. The Road to Glory, your Sunday morning gospel and inspirational music program on Styles 96.1 from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. Tune in. Styles, the people station. Hi, this is Von Sill Belcher, and you're listening to Styles 96.1, 96.7, the people station with Victoria Miller. You're tuned into Light in My World. I'm 
Father God, we thank you that you are Lord. You are King. You are Father. And most of all, you love us with an everlasting love. We thank you for loving us this morning. And so we lift you up. We magnify you. Father, we thank you for the life of Sister Denise this morning. Father, you know every situation that cumbered her life. You know everything about Denise, Father God. Father God, you said in your words that before you place her into her mother's belly, you knew her. And so, Almighty God, every situation that cumbered Denise's life does not take you by surprise. Father, you are not the one who have to scratch your head to wonder what to do into Denise's situation. You already have the answer. You have already made a way for her. And so this morning, Lord God, even as she put in her plea today, Almighty God, I thank you right now for your love, for your mercy, showing up in that life and reaching out to her, Almighty God, meeting her needs. Father, you know everything that there is. And so right now we release your order into the life of Denise right now in the United States of America. You know where she lives. You know her address. You know the Denise, exact Denise that I'm talking about this morning. And so, Almighty God, I lift her up to you. And not just lift her up to you, but I lift her out of her situation this morning. I lift up Denise. I command the spirit of Denise to soar. Father God, I speak salvation over her life this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because your word says, Almighty God, that we should seek you first, the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then the things that we have need of will come to our life. And so if she's not saved this morning, I release salvation over her life. I release the order of God in her life this morning. I come against every controversy in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against confusion of the mind in the mighty name of Jesus. And I speak peace. I speak order. I speak life to Denise this morning. And I thank you, Almighty God, as you lift her out of her situation and allow her to soar like an eagle. Father, I thank you for change coming to her life right now. And I thank you, Father, that because we pray and because you have already made all things available for her life and godliness, we touch and agree this morning with her. And we thank you, Almighty God, that her life will never be the same. You will intervene and we thank you, Father, for doing it. So Lord, we cry to you. Father, we lift up Lenny to you in St. Thomas and Roshana. And we thank you, Almighty God, that more than anything, you want to touch these lives. Father God, you love mankind so much that when Adam fall in the garden, Almighty God, you could not leave it there. Hallelujah. But you, 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 you came down in the garden and you, 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 make, you make a declaration where the enemy is concerned. And you look into the eyes of the serpent and you said, the seed of the woman. Hallelujah. Because the seed of the woman has already come, Almighty God, we give you praise this morning. The seed of the woman that would bruise the ear, that would bruise the head of the serpent to destroy the plans and the plots of the enemy against mankind. You send for Jesus as the seed this morning. He's already fulfilled his, his, his task. He has already finished his work. And so because of that this morning, we thank you for Lenny and Rosanna this morning. That because Jesus Christ have already made all things available for their life, Father, we lift up your name. We lift them up to you. And we thank you, Father, that it is finished where these two lives are concerned. Whatever the situation is coming against this family right now, God, we thank you for deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Almighty God, and we release the blood into their lives to change the atmosphere. We send the Spirit of God to their homes right now to eradicate demons and devils in the mighty name of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus in and over that family right now, in and over that house right now, in everything, God, I release the blood right now. And I thank you, Father God, that because the blood is there, your life will take a change for good. And I thank you, Father, as you lift them out of bondage. I thank you, Father, as you lift them out of every chaotic situation and as you change their lives. I thank you, Father, that they will come to bring you glory and they will testify of your goodness.
Kristen say good morning sister how are you good to be good to be played God to be praised keep up the good work As we ask the Lord to wrap us this morning, He's more than able and He wants to. Father, right now we lift up Sandra to you. We thank you for change. We thank you for miracles. We thank you, Almighty God, for restoration and restitution. Everything that the enemy has taken, Almighty God, I pray that he will restore it a hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Almighty God, as you eradicate, as you run out, as you lose every spirit from off of her life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, as you surround her with your blood and deliverance. Father, we release your peace into that house this morning. And we thank you. We thank you, Almighty God, as your bringer, as your bringer into every purpose, Almighty God, that you have predestinated for our life. We give you thanks. From in your arms, oh Nothing like your presence, oh oh, 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 oh. Carla, good morning. Again, Sister, Sister Vic, I'm asking you to pray for my daughter, Jennifer Ramnan. Okay. She's in America. She's, she's in not America. Feeling well. You said she's in America, Sister Garden? Yes, miss. Okay. Come on, everybody. Let's give God this worship. If you know he's awesome, come on, stand on your feet, everybody. If you know he's awesome, you're in awe of his grace. You're in awe of his goodness. You're in awe of his mercy. You're in awe of his provision. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, lift your hands as we lift our voices. Come on, say, my God is awesome. My God is awesome. Come on, say, he can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Come on, say it, hide me from the rain. That's it. My God is awesome. My God is Come on. Awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength, where I've, Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he'll reign. Forever he will Come on, you got it. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. Come on, say, he can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Has he ever covered you? Come on. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. He heals me when I'm... Good morning. I'm calling this morning for some prayer. Okay. What is your name, sweetheart? Marlene. Marlene. Yes. Is there any, part, any um, special thing that you want me to pray about? I overall health in general. Okay, so you just want me to pray? Just to pray because I'm, I mean, I have a husband. He was, um, all of a sudden he has kidney failure. And uh, it's kind of rough just dealing with all of this. Okay, okay. All right, Marlene, we'll touch and agree with you. And we know that God is good and he wants more than anything to deliver you. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. You want to stay on the line while we pray or you, you, you're going to get off? No, I'm going to stay on the line. Okay, Father, we lift up Marlene to you. We thank you, Almighty God, that you know Marlene before creation. She was with you, Almighty God. And so here she is this morning coming to you, Father. It's not a surprise. And so, Father, we thank you for the life of Marlene right now. Father God, she's saying that there are some stuff that is happening in her life, Almighty God, that it's not easy. 
But Father God, you, you, you remind us that your yoke is easy and that your burden is light. And so, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you on her behalf this morning. Father, I bind her to your yoke. I bind her to your burden. I pray this morning, Almighty God, that even as she experiences what she's going through, Almighty God, we know, Almighty God, that healing has been made available for her husband. Her situation don't take you by surprise. Because over 2,000 years ago, you sent Jesus Christ to the cross. And he hung there, he bled, he suffered, and he died for these circumstances, Almighty God. So whatever is going on in that family's life right now, I speak peace. I speak healing. And I speak deliverance to that family in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against everything, Almighty God, that is trying to destroy. Hallelujah. I come against the destroyer, the wicked one, Father God, who came to destroy. And Father, this morning, we spread the blood of Jesus over them, Father. We thank you, Almighty God, that you will bring healing to this man's body right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we speak peace to the mind of Marlene, Father. That even as she tend to him, as she look over him, she will release the word of God over his body. She will not be afraid, but she will stand. Hallelujah. I come against the spirit of fear that wants to bring her down. Father, I come against everything, Almighty God, every havoc in that life right now. And I speak life. I speak life to that family, Almighty God. And I pray, Almighty God, that you will keep them in oneness. Hallelujah. I pray for strength to Marlin, Almighty God, that she will look after him with your grace, with your favor. And she will not be defeated. No matter what the enemy is showing her, she will stand her ground and believe that you, Almighty God, have provided healing. And that man will receive it. Father, I pray for open door. I pray for provisions. I pray, Almighty God, that they will know you better than before, even as you release the things that they have need of. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. Marlene, if you can agree with me this morning and believe that prayer, then you will see God in your life. I agree with you, man. I thank you for the prayer. All right, Marlene. Thanks for calling. Sister Vicky, <laughs> you know, sister chicken come for trick way. <laughs> right now we are sending it back to the pit of hell with light in my world and 96.1 FM. Sister Victoria, SSBG representing. Never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see how you were there for me and I can say never would have made it, never could have made it without you, I would have lost it all. I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better, much better. When I look back over all you brought me through, I can see that you are the one I held on to, and I never, never would have made it. Oh, I never could have made it. So it's a good morning. Please pray a special prayer for my mom. Blossom, she gets a stroke and that left in in the left side. So a very good morning to you, Sister Veed. 
and the Sals FM crew, I thank the Lord every day for your radio show. Keep up the good work. This is Richie Rich inside Aguawam, Massachusetts. Of course, Richie Rich, we know you have it locked like that. And it is for persons like you who are edified daily. I'm telling you, this program is helping people. I mean, no matter what nobody wants to say. There are times when I walk through the street and persons will just come up to me and shake my hand. And from the, from the way they shook my hand, from the, way what, from the way they spoke to me, I understand just what the program is doing for them. It educates them. It brings light to their eyes. And they are so grateful. They shake my hand with such gratitude. They are saying, this is what we have been waiting for. Every time I get a shake on, I can feel the pull. Hallelujah. And so we are not playing. When we're not playing church. We're not in religion either. It's not about tradition. It's about reality. People need the Lord. And so we can feed them a bunch of religious things and things that are going to help them. Because they've lost lick them for six. People need things People need to be educated in a way that when they get the information, they can practice it and see work. You see work for them and see say God real. Too long some people are playing church. We are not about that. We are about feeding people the knowledge, the information from the throne of heaven. And so Richie Rich, bless up yourself. And keep it locked always to styles because there's always a blessing to receive. Somebody just need to testify to something next to him. Tell him, I'm strong. I'm wise. I'm better. Much better. When I look back over what he brought me through. This one's a good morning. Please pray for me and my family, Clovis Lane. So much better. Thank you from Nola. I made it. Is there anybody in this house other than me that could declare you made it? Tell your neighbor, never would have made it. Never would have made it. Tell them, never could have made it. I don't know what you're struggling with this morning, but you see if God in your life, know this, you're gonna make it. Just two or three people that would just declare it. Never would have made it. Never could have made it. Never could have made it. This one's a good morning. Please pray for me and my family. I just love to encourage Clovis Lane. Thank you. And this is coming from Nola. Father, we lift, up, we lift up Nola to you this morning and her family in Clovis Lane. And we thank you that there is none like you, Almighty God. You, you more than all, Father, wants to deliver these people and you wants to rid their life of every avox that the enemy has placed in it. And so as they reach out to me this morning, God, I lift them up to you. And I thank you, Almighty God, as you surround them right now with your protection, with your peace that passes all understanding. I lift them up to you this morning, Almighty God, and I pray for your mercy over their lives. I lift them up to you, Almighty God, and I pray, Almighty God, that whatever it is that is bothering, that is trying to keep them under, I pray, Almighty God, for elevation. I pray for light and I pray for victory. Father, there is none like you. And where these lives are concerned, you are more than capable, you are more than able. And so I release, I release the order of you right now into Clovis Lane in the life of Nola and family right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I send the blood of Jesus to that life right now. And I thank you, Father, as you cleanse and as you make whole everything that is out of order. Father, I speak life and light to their surrounding. In the name of Jesus. This 
This one said, good morning, sister. Please, I'm asking you to pray for this man to stay by his family and leave road. You are my This person is asking that I pray for this man to leave the road and stick to his family. Sister, you're asking a hard thing. Not that God cannot do it, but look here. Are you married to this man? Are you in a marriage relationship? Is your life lining up with what God calls you to do? Is, is this man really interested to be home? What is it that is going on with this family right now? Why he wants to be on the road? Because people do things for reason, you know. And it could be that this man is still searching, understanding that, that, that if he's still in sin, he's not going to stay in his position and, and change. And so what I can pray is for salvation. And so right now, Father God, I thank you that you are Lord, you are King, you are Master. And if you are sending this text and you are not a born-again believer, then first of all, you need to get saved. Before you can change anybody else, you have to look into your own self. You have to allow yourself to be changed first. And then you can wish for change and pray for change for others. And so I lift up this person to you right now. Father, you know everything about this person. You see the situation around this person. And you know the mishaps and the misunderstanding, the chaos. Almighty God, the controversy. And so right now... I come against the spirit of confusion. I come against every mind-blinding spirit that have tormented the life of this woman. And Father, I thank you right now for sight. Hallelujah. I speak sight to you, woman. I command you to see. 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 And I release salvation over your life right now. I release the order of God to your family. Hallelujah. And I pray, Almighty God, that even as she eat, as she take heed to the word of you, Almighty God, and surrender her life, God, then that will mark a change in her life and things will begin to come together. Father, I pray against every spirit of confusion that have keep the mind confused. And I pray that, Almighty God, she will understand. I pray for understanding. Hallelujah. I pray for peace to come to her mind, Almighty God, that she will not wander, Almighty God, but she will know you. And she will come to accept you as the Lord and as Savior of her life. Father, I lift her out of darkness this morning. And I pray, Almighty God, that even as she made the decision to change, so it is that her life will be changed. Say good morning, sister. Please, I'm asking you to pray for this man. Same thing. A pleasant good morning, sister V. Listening to you is a wonderful blessing. So please pray for me and my family. Families, keep up the good work, Miss Brown. Miss Brown, bless up yourself. You don't know you have a luck always. And we love you. We also pray and release the power of God to your family. And we pray for the blessing of God just to overtake your life. Won't you come on down? Won't you come? Now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Amen. Born into sin that I may live again. Don't allow those situations in your life to keep you from having relationship with God. No, you need to know him. You know, many of us talk about, oh, I'm going to get to know God tomorrow. Tomorrow is a promise that you can have salvation today. Now, won't you come? Won't you come on down, brother? Come on down. Come on down, sister. God loves you. God be praised. 
story of a young man who decided to leave home and strike out on his own. If you have been blessed by this ministry, we would like to give you the opportunity to partner with us and help us in sharing the cost to win the loss. To send your gift or offering, please call us at 583-4479 or email us at vsharpmiller at gmail.com. Relive the music memory. Solid Gold Star Sundays from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. with your host, Captain Baker, on your favorite station, the Paper Station. Stars FM 96.1. Reminisce on the past with the music. Flashback on what it is that was. It's the program you don't want to miss on a Sunday. Solid Gold Stars from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. You join me. Let us recap the music of years to hear cool the best music experience need a lifestyle change tired of the same old same old sister peace restaurant in hope bay is a healthy alternative vegetarian dishes natural juices puddings shakes and much more open monday to saturday 11 a.m to 6 p.m Look out for the pretty, pretty building just outside of Hope Bay. Telephone number 532-0723. Sunday Peppering on Stars FM 96.1. Sundays 8 to 12 midnight to begin the work week only on Stars FM. It's coming again. Robinson & Sons Hardware is having their pre-Christmas clearance sale. 10% to 25% off on special items. Commencing October 6th until we say when. Take advantage of this chance to get your hardware items at discount prices. Robinson & Sons Hardware, the place to shop for the holiday season. Planning a party? Club night out, stage show, a gospel concert, or even a business sales event? Let Styles FM be a part of your promoting tool. Take advantage of our low price promotion packages with commercials, interviews, giveaways, reviews, and much more. We have special offers when you mix and match and bundle your options. Contact us at 876-286-9216 or 439-5160. Styles FM, for the most effective way to exploit your market. Marketing dollar. Hi, this is Von Sill Belcher, and you're listening to Styles 96.1, 96.7, the People Station with Victoria Miller. Amen. Amen. This is Light in My World. As we continue to pray.
in my world. As the choir begins to sing, there are some of you who are going through your own storms. Can we talk about it? Won't you come on down? Won't you come? Now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Amen. Born into sin that I may live again. Don't allow those situations in your life to keep you from having a relationship with God. You know, many of us talk about, oh, I'm going to get to know God tomorrow. Tomorrow isn't promised, and you can have salvation today. Now, won't you come? Won't you come on down, brother? Come on down. Can we behold the Lamb this morning? But I'm standing right in, you see, you've been looking at your situation around you for too long. Can you stop looking at your situation and begin to look at the Lamb? Begin to look at the promises of God. Begin to understand that with God, all things are possible to them that believe. There is no Can you believe this? and behold him for who he is your problems they are not bigger than god your situation they are not bigger than god no not, nothing that you go through takes him by surprise stop looking stop beholding your situation and wondering what you're gonna do and begin to behold the king who is mighty who is forever god who is everlasting who is more than able to do abundantly above that which you can think are even acts of him. Story of a young Behold the lamb this morning. To leave home and strike out on his own. He was determined to live life on his own terms. And although he knew right from wrong, it seems so much better. To and so, Father, with that, we lift up Sister Garden daughter to you, Jennifer. Understanding, Almighty God, that she's sick. Almighty God. And so right now I release healing. I release healing to Jennifer in America right now where you are, Jennifer. I speak healing to you. Understand too, Jennifer, that healing was made available for mankind to have, to feast upon. And so as a representative of the kingdom of heaven who understand that this is so, I release the healing of God into your body right now to counteract every sickness or disease that is plaguing you. I command that sickness to go to the pit of hell where it belongs. I send it to the lower region of hell. And I thank you, Father. I bind her to the healing that is in Christ. In Jesus' name. At that point, he realizes that he had placed himself in that situation.
And so it is, we go straight into the word of God. Of course, before I go, I wanted to play something. I want you to help me welcome the Cole Binion tonight. Come on. I want you to play this song so people can know that God is with them. There's a river whose streams may glad the city of a God. It's a choice. This rejoicing thing, you have to make the choice for rejoice. You have to tell yourself, say, look here, no matter what I go on in my life, I not allow it to stress me. And in a couple minutes from this, I'm going to tell you how to do it. And of course, we will now go to the segment where the word, the undiluted word, come forth out of the Spirit of God. This morning, of course, we want to look into the topic that says, how oh, to excel beyond your circumstances. How oh, to excel beyond your circumstances. And of course, we'll be looking into the book of Genesis 39. We'll go there in a moment. I am going to work on your thinking this morning, the way you think. I'm going to allow you to understand what to put into your mind because the things that you are putting in your mind, if you are not careful, they will lead to your downfall. And so I'm going to be working on your thinking, whereas to get into your art, I need to get what I'm saying to you into your art. There is no more room for religious stuff. The things that I'm going to be putting into your heart this morning, it's going to be pushing out some religious stuff, some things that you have heard before, some things now. When, when, when you begin to listen, when you begin to tune in, you will understand that the things that you used to hang up on before become tasteless. Because you have been, you have been practicing and you have been working and you have been... Um, carrying out the traditional stuff of your church and devil lick your physics and not nah help. You have been praying and you have been fasting and you have been doing a whole lot of works thinking that you have to appease God. And God is saying, look here, it's not about you. It's not about your works. It's not about your religious practice. It's all about me. It's all about my good pleasure in giving you a kingdom. And so if he have given you a kingdom, you need to find the kingdom that he has given unto you and you need to manifest it in the earth for such a time as this. And so with that, we go into the word of God. We want to talk about being successful beyond our circumstances. 
And so that is what Genesis 39 and verse 2. Let us read from verse 1. And what verse 1 is saying, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of, the, of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down. Tita, in verse 2 said, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Now, when you listen to what the Bible is saying, you know, we don't just read the Bible and put it down and say, I that the Bible say. You need to think. Come outside of your, in the, out, of, out of the box now and begin to think. Because here it is, the word of God is saying, and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. But before, the Bible told us that this Ishmaelite sold Joseph into slavery. So, so, so tell me now. Oh, when you look, when you, when you really look into it, how can Joseph, who is now a slave, be a prosperous man? These are the questions we, we, we need to begin to look into the word and understand what clearly what the word is saying. It's not just to read and leave it, man. It is to understand because when I read that scripture, me I say, but no, how oh, the Bible has said Joseph prosperous and yet still he's a slave. He's working away his life for nothing. So tell me how he's prosperous. How can you be a slave and be called prosperous at the same time? How is it that you can be seen as a prosperous man? Eh? Let us look at verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to be prosperous. All that he did, make all that he did to prosper in his hands. No, look here, not only Joseph, no, no. And not only that we see said the Lord is with him, but the Potiphar, the master, the slave master, this say. The Bible says, and the master see that the Lord is with him. So what is going on with Joseph? What brings Potiphar to that conclusion that he could have seen God upon Joseph? Let us go further. And so the Bible say that Potiphar saw that the Lord was with him. Now the key to Joseph's success was that the Lord was with him. What did Potiphar see in Joseph that leads him to this conclusion? There was a certain grace on his life, the way he goes about doing what he does. I believe he stands out different from the other slaves. And I think that whatever he did, it was well pleasing to his master. Probably what he did, he did from his art. Maybe he had skills, he had talent, but I believe it was more his bright countenance. The way he was always smiling, the way he was always willing, the way he carried himself in that bright countenance. I believe that in terms of what um, he was sold into slavery, you know, understand it, you know, that his brother was the one who put him in the pit and caused these people to take him out and sell him in a slavery. Joseph, like many of us today, could have said, if God did love me, he would make this happen. Joseph could have become sour and said, no, sir, God not real, because look here now, after me I serve God from a true heart, me honest, me do everything what God asked me to do, and here it is, God allow me. To be sold into slavery. But we see that Joseph's life didn't stop there. And so like that this morning. But Joseph continued to make a bright countenance. Show up on him face each day as he served him master. And so it is with us today. Whatever situation we are going through at times. At times it is our, it is our attitude. That we show forth. That will tell us that if, if we really believe, say God is there for us. Because look here, some people have got through the wilderness. And them have got through the storm. But yet still we are persistent. 
We still carry a smile. Hallelujah. We still go about our business. We still declare God. We still touch the life of people. And nobody sees and knows what is going on in our life. Because we still carry that countenance, that aroma, that presence, that grace. That when people look upon us, they have to say, no man. God is with this person. And so it is Potiphar was able to see that Joseph served gracefully. Why, why, why Potiphar conclude that Joseph, that God was with Joseph? Because maybe the way oh, 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 we understand Joseph's life, must say, no man, this man is either a fool or something different about him. Because the man served with grace. And so we want to carry on. We want to carry on. We want to carry on the goodness and the good news of Jesus Christ with that understanding that no matter what come we are, man, no, let us not serve slothful. Let us not serve in, in, in a way where, where we put God to shame and say, well, then if God did love me, then these things would not happen to me. All of these things that is happening, God allow them to process your life. You see, if Joseph never reached into Egypt as a slave, he wouldn't reach. So sometimes so something come your way and I'm not wrong. When you look at where Joseph is seated, remember, you know, you know the story where that Joseph become a prime minister. This was all a process to take him where he was going. Sometimes you get some prophecy over your life and you smile and say, yes, God, I'm going to use me. But understand this. Understand it clearly that before you can get used, you have to get processed. Before the goal that you purchase. Right? The goal that you purchase as a necklace or a chain or a bangle or a ring or whatever. Before this goal could come to you looking so nice, it had to went through the fire. Hallelujah. And so it is at times. God could not just take us up and use us or we would have feel. So we have to go through. We have to go through the different, different process, the aspect that, that will take us the road, the journey that will take us into our destiny. Look at Jesus. When Mary, when the angel announced to Mary, Hail Mary, you are favored, you are woman, you are favored among all. You are going to be carrying the savior of the world. Can you think about it? Your son is going to be saving the world. And then later on when Mary looked, Mary seen Peter's hang up on cross dead. Think about it. But this was what it took to save mankind. This was how he would lay down his life as a sacrifice to deliver mankind. So our process that we go through, it's not our defeat. It's not about for us to be defeated and with our head hung down and we, we, we worry and we stress ourselves and dead and go on before time and not get to the destiny. God wants us to lift up our heads, oh, he gets and be lifted up he everlasting door. And allow the king of glory to come in. Because know this. After you have gone through the process. Then your destiny is sure. Hallelujah. And so this morning. I want to say to somebody. Stay strong. Stay in the midst of the storm. Because there is coming a day. When your storm will be over. You see, right now your storm is just temporary. It is just to process you. It is just the part way that is going to take you to the place that you are going. And so God intend for you to go through it. And that is why he allowed the storm. Understand this. That the storm could not come without God allowing it. And the fact that he allowed it, there must be a, pro there must be a purpose behind it. Bless the name of Jesus. And so we need to go through. It's hard to be a slave and remain happy and delightful. I believe, this Jose, I believe that Joseph was delightful. I believe that Joseph served from his heart. When you really start to believe that, you, you, that, that your success depends on God with you, then you will see manifestation. And so because we go around and look, to itself most time to make things come true. Then we not really I hang up on God protection. I hang up on God love. Yes, we hear say God a protector, but how much do we depend on him? Because as problem come with ball, we worry, we fret. And we forgot what the word of God promised us. 
and we now recite these things over our life and over our situation. We run God either and begin to frustrate ourselves. But God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Our success does not rule by what you see. You just know that everything is going to be okay. Because you are in God's hand. And if you are in God's hand like, Mo, like Joseph, the Bible said, and the Lord was with him, and he was a prosperous man. Joseph was a slave, but yet still he was a prosperous man. Because his situation that he was in, it was his beginning of prosperity. Hallelujah. Every time you see a challenge, every time a challenge come upon you, and every time you look, you see things that clamp you down and surround you, it's the beginning. If you can just tell yourself, God is with me. I don't care what I see this morning. I don't care what is surrounding me. I don't care what the situation look like. Yes, the doctor might give you over for dead. But what is, whose report will you believe this morning? What does the word of God say about you? Because although the doctor diagnoses you, say you got dead, and you have this and you have that, and whatever he diagnoses you with, understand also that there is another word that have the last say. And if you can go to that word this morning, which is the word of God, inside of the word, the word of God said, by his stripe you are ill. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the doctor and suck you up and dead? Or will you allow the good God of heaven to bring healing to your body if you believe his word? He has already made healing available. And if he had made it available, that it, then it is for you and I. Believe it and walk it out. The word prosperity means to succeed in what you do. To succeed in what you do. So even as we hear say, Joseph, our prosperous man, never look on your status and what you have in life and decide, say, because me accumulate this, me prosperous. It's not about what you accumulate. It's not about goals that you set and reach. It's none of those things. Understand it, that there are so many people out there with money that is miserable, sick, Lord God, they are tormented and the money not make them happy not bring no peace to their life. So money is never about happiness. The moment we hear about prosperity, sometimes we think about money. Money and prosperity, you know, but and, and, and a hunger money and prosperity. Prosperity means to have nothing missing and nothing broken. It means to succeed in all that you do. Hallelujah. And so Joseph was a successful man. Why? Because although the bread and threw him into the pit, he did not give up on God. He did not turn his mind off of God. He did not hate God. He did not rebel. His mind was steadfast. He was consistently giving God glory with his life. It doesn't matter what may come your way. As long as you tend to continue in praise and worship, unto God then you are prosperous it's not about the things the material things that you have that makes you prosperous it's about your mindset and what you do towards God you are a child of God and you have given God your life then your prosperity first have to be in your mind right now how many of us as sons of God know what it means to be successful being a child of God, we are qualified for success. But this prosperity will only take place if you do what's necessary to see this manifestation. So yes, God has already made all things available for life and godliness. We are our salvation lie. But as I said so many times before on this radio station, that our salvation is not automatic. It is not automatic. So... Just like Jesus go and did what he had to do to make our life and godliness available, we have to do something also to pull them into the natural, to allow these things to, to, to come into our life and to manifest. So we don't just sit back and say, all right, me save and me sanctify, and me save and inner God, but when trouble come, we murmur. That's not belief. Right? And so when, if we need to see real manifestation, what do we do? 
And this is why we are not called to be confirmed to religious movement. But we are, but the word of God states that he He wish above all that we prosper and be in good health. He wish above all that we prosper. That's what the word of God says. That he wish above all that we prosper. But how do we get there? It goes on to say, even as our soul prosper. How do we get into soul prosperity? Hmm? Because what the word of God is saying, you know, if, he, if the word of God says, he wish above all that we prosper, even as our soul prosper. What is this really saying? It means then that in order for us to prosper, we must prosper first in our soul. What is our soul? Our mind. So if there is no mind prosperity, there can be no life prosperity. Because as a man think, so is he. So if you're not prospering the things where you're supposed to prosper in your mind first, then you will have nothing changing in your life. Because it is all about the mind. So there can be no prosperity in your life until there is soul prosperity. So what does this mean? When we talk about soul, we are talking about the mind, not the spirit. The spirit is already power packed with all that we have need of for life and godliness. It is for us now to get it into our minds to believe that God has already put into our spirit, man, all that we have need of for life and godliness and see the manifestation. So it is our outward that need this supply. And our outward cannot get this supply without soul prosperity. Now, how does our soul prosperity come about? The word of God also defines that in order for us to be of reasonable service and to know what good and to know what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect, what is the perfect will of God, we got to renew our mind. Isn't that what the word says? In order for us to know what is perfect and what is good and what is God's perfect will, then we have to renew the mind. Isn't that what Romans 12 verse 3 or 2 going down there tell us? That if we want to know what is good, it's not about conforming to a set of church rule. It's not about being religious and worshipping on a particular day. It's not about anything that we do that is going to change us. You see, the church continues to, to think that it is their religious rules and practice that makes them be a better person. And that not change nobody. All you can do is conform to some rule. But when somebody step on your car, the true self will come out. And so at that true self that you need... If it demolish, it is the flesh now that wants to be in control all the time that needs to be subjected. But how do you subject the flesh? By renewing your mind. By renewing your mind, it means to change the way you think. Exchange your belief for God's belief. Exchange your thinking for God's thinking. Now, how can we know what God is thinking? We go to his word. What his word says about us is what we will say about ourselves. How can we know what God believes is to go to his word? What his word say is what he believe, and what he believes is what we should also believe. Amen. So if he says, send Jesus Christ as a ransom, that through him we might be saved. When utter claps come, we are going to confess this, that God even though the situation never come against me, and even though I this situation from the past situation, yet still I will not fear because your word says that I am delivered, I am saved, I am sanctified, that I should cast my cares upon you because you cares. It no matter how long it takes for the manifestation, stand on the word of God. Because whether you take one day or a year, God is with you and he will not allow anything to destroy if you are believing him. Right to the Bible said the word of God cannot return to him void. Anything that God spoke out of his mouth must accomplish. And if you can believe what God speak to you, then your life will be changed. You will see change coming out of your life. But the thing about us as human beings, 
We don't believe the word of God. We believe our eyesight. We believe what we hear and we believe what we feel. And we live sensual. We believe our senses that is attached to our flesh. But God wants us to change that belief. And he wants us to exchange that belief for the word of God. And, and amidst what we see, we have to learn to stand and walk in the faith, believe in the word of God. So it's never about what we see, hear, and feel anymore. It's about what the word of God says about us. Because in spite of what we are seeing, hearing, and feeling, it's what God's word says about us that we'll have the last say. And if you don't trust that, you know what will happen? It's not that God is still going to help you, you know. But you see, when you not believe God, it means you're going to do something else. And what you're going to do can damage your life. Anytime you believe God, your action tells you that you believe. So I mean, I wonder if some people believe. You know directly when some people are believers. The way they speak and the way the, and the things they do tell you that they believe or they don't believe. Our life as a Christian is to live by faith. It is to live believing in the word of God. And that is why the, the, the Jesus Christ could quote that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. Because when you stand on the word of God and believe the word and take the word for what the word is, then you will see a result. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You are going to be triumphant. All your part is to believe God. God is not a man that he should lie. And if he say I come true for you, he's going to come true. Nothing can destroy you. You may be cast down, but you will not be utterly destroyed. You will not be destroyed because he is going to come true for you. Can you believe God this morning? So we have to renew the mind. Right? The way the mind prosper. Is to allow our mind to be in line with the word. That is how the mind prosper. That is how the soul prosper. And so as long as you are putting in the word of God in your mind. Then you will prosper. And not before long you will see prosperity coming on the outside too. But you'll have to first get it into your mind. And this renewal of the mind is not a one-time thing. And just today, you take up the word and read it. And say, all right, me hear the word. So it means to say every time something threatens you, you're going to go back to the word. You're going to chew you over. The devil come and say, you know, since the building won't stand, you know, you're going to manage. This and that are going to happen. You take up the word and say, the, the, the Lord is with me. And you recite the word. You confess the word. Every time something threatening come to your mind, speak the word of God because that is how you counteract it. You see, if you shut up your mouth and not say nothing, then the thoughts are going to overwhelm you. You even go drown you because the devil now stop inject thought in there until you succumb to where you must say. And then you start shake like leaf and not no happen yet, you know. And you become scared, you become fearful, you, you become, you start drink, you start do everything, you start smoke because what? Fear have you gr under his grip. Before you allow fear to have your hand and grip, man, begin to ponder the word. And when you are pondering and think about the word of God, not only speak it, not only, not only um, think about it, but speak it. Because you understand, you know, anything will come in your mind. Something scientific will me prove. Anytime you think and you talk, your thinking stop. And so anytime the enemy interject anything in your mind, you begin to speak that after you shut up. Speak the word every time you speak. Every time you put the thoughts of fear and inject them into your mind, speak the word of God. It is the word of God that will bring solution to your situation. You no know, matter how long it takes, if you continue to stand on the word of God and believe God, then there is going to be a breakthrough. And so mind prosperity, in order to get your mind to prosper, you have to line up your mind with the word of God. So it don't matter where you are, when the Lord is with you, as long as your mind is in the right place, then prosperity is a must. Prosperity is a must. And that is why God was, uh, the, the Bible was able to say that, that Joseph was prosperous because Joseph's mind never changed. 
Even though his circumstances then change. Because in left front time loving our my father and get thrown in at the pit and then from pit he's selling to slavery. His mind was still set on God. What is it your mind is set on today? Did you know that Joseph was prosperous because of his mindset? And because he keep the, he keep the faith in our mind. Even when Patifa wife come, because the devil always had to do things, you know. Even when Patifa wife come and start to strip in clothes and Joseph run from her and she tell life and the man in God prison. That was just a setup also. Come on. Sometimes, the, look here, a God make good and he make bad, you know, and sometimes he use the very evil to bring we now a purpose. Come on. When God show, when God show the devil Job, you think that the devil never see Job a long time? But he couldn't touch him. God, why, you know, why, why now in a God, God all of a sudden I take up the devil and I say, do you consider my servant Job? The devil like for trouble mankind and God know it. But God said, look here, me go use the devil for bring me glory out of, out of Job. And so it is, he used these things at time to bring us right where he want us. Look how he used the devil same way. We crucify Jesus and bring about redemption for mankind. He is he just is God and God alone. And he knows how to use all things being good. And so if you can trust him and say, me no matter what me see, me no matter what me feel, and what me hear, yes, me hear say I will put people are dead from Ebola. But I thank the Lord that I am seated in righteousness and righteousness protect me. Because I know me make myself righteous, but it is Jesus Christ who makes me righteous. And so if Ebola come me way, or if, if Chick V come me way, I can still declare that I am the righteousness of God. I can still be healed. I can still be delivered. Nothing, nothing should make you fear and go under. And so when we listen to the radio, when we listen to the news, when we listen to the television at times, all we hear is fear. But I bring the good news to you this morning that it doesn't matter what is going on in the planet Earth. Nothing can stop the time. Not even Ebola or we want name. No nuclear war weapon can stop God's plan from coming into the Earth. Fear not, little flock, but log into Jesus because him have the answer. And this morning, I bring you the gospel. I bring you the good news that no matter what is happening, you can be prosperous. You can be prosperous. It doesn't matter what you see that threaten your life. If God is with you, you will smile through the storm. You will go through the storm and come out victorious. Don't be afraid. Just log on to Jesus if you never depend on Jesus. Come in on him. And if you did in him and never in him, good, you need to be completely seated in him. Come into his words. Read the word of God each day. Search out the promise them when you have in the fear. And every time something knock, show them the receipt. Because every promise that he placed in the word of God for you, it is your receipt to what Jesus Christ have already paid for. Do you believe it? So we know that we have hope in our God. We are not like the Eden who believe in a demon God and then feel them. Eh? You think God would have tell we say, all right, we're going to get deliverance and deliverance no come. The only way deliverance no come unless you walk out of the presence of God. And that is what we see with people. They can't wait. And so because they can't wait, then take up them big bad self and walk out of the presence of God and walk in a danger and some of them dead before time. But I want to say to somebody this morning, do not allow yourself to alert. Don't lurk into danger. Stay with God. Because guess what? I always tell people, say, my worst day with God is still the best day ever. Even when we're out of sin, I am so happy and glad that I'm with God, no matter where I'm going. We might not have no money right now. We might depend on my face right now. But I'm still the best day. It's better than what I did in the world. Because I, I live in a classy life. I live with my head whole eye. I live with my head lifted up because me not bow to the Satan. Hallelujah. Me not give up my salvation for nothing. Come on. You have Christian that go sleep with a man for just one night dinner. What is one night dinner where you can't stay without? What is that? 
And you say you just walk out of the presence of God and go come in and go commit fornication for one one night dinner. As if God is not able to give you many nights of dinner. If it means I not provide it tonight, it means you can't do without it. And say so if you have to do without it, do without it, man, no bow. Do not allow yourself to be bowed under. Hey, come on. And the devil, see him, spend the way you are bowed to a him and dash the something in your life and stop up your, 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 your finance and a do all of this something and a him you go back to. He's not for you, but God is for you. And if God is for you, you will be victorious. You cannot allow yourself to stoop that low. You must not allow yourself to stoop that low. Do not go back to the enemy. Do not allow him to bring you back into foolishness because he's going to kill you. He does not love you. All that he wants to do is to destroy you. Take a grip this morning. Hold on to God's never failing hand because he's the only one who said he will never leave you nor forsake you. And the reason why he said he will not forsake you, it means that no matter what you do, he not left you. He's not leaving you. And even when I take the pole, and even when I take the strip club, and even when I take the bed of fornication, that still small voice, if you are saved, you can hear it. Saying, you are not like that. That's not who you are. You shouldn't be in this bed. That which you used to enjoy, you can't enjoy no more. Come out of that and come and hold firm to daddy. Because daddy will not allow anything to destroy you this morning. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm here to bring hope to you this morning. I'm here to say to you this morning God, that God loves you. Do not allow your circumstances to measure the love of God because he has already proven love when he went to Calvary for you. Nobody else was worthy to do it. And he sent forth Jesus Christ that gave up his life as a ransom to prove love. You don't need to allow your circumstances to tell her that God don't love you. And I tell her, say, well, if God didn't love me, would me, me I suffer them, I suffer me. Look here, you're going through it for a purpose. Go through the storm if you must. Because after you come out of this storm, you will have backbone. You're not going to bow down under every little thing no more. You're going to get strength and you're going to be stronger. You don't have to bow. Hallelujah. I tell myself, the devil, whatever you have to bring, bring it on. Because if it means that to the death, to the death. Because I'm not coming back in your kingdom. When I was in your kingdom, you licked me for six. You bring shame, sin, and disgrace to my life. And all you bring a heart take, I ain't coming back. So that's all I want you to in my life. Because there is going to be a time when God said, enough. Enough is enough. And I'm going to hold on to God. Never mind me holding on because I can't hold him and hold on to him strong enough to keep myself. But I've already asked him to hold me. Hallelujah. I've already put my confidence, my all. I've already rest my head upon his shoulder. And I've already said, Daddy, me a fear. Just hold me in your arm. Don't make me go astray. Don't make me do anything out of your will. Because my mind, my aim, my determination... Is to serve in your kingdom. Is to be a loyal son. And so this morning, I don't know who you are. But wherever you are, you have allowed yourself to be bent over. You have allowed yourself to bow. But you can get up this morning. Get up. Brush off yourself and come back. Come back to God. Because he's the only one who loves you more than anyone else. Hallelujah. And he have your plan. But you must go through the process. Hallelujah. And so this morning be reminded. Be reminded that life prosperity is soul prosperity. If your soul not prosper in a God, then your life will not prosper. And if you notice, so as I said before, it doesn't matter where you are. When the Lord is with you, as long as your mind is in the right place, then prosperity is a must. And if you notice, you have to have your mind renewed in every area to experience prosperity. If you are a Christian that is hooked upon religion, 
are mixed up with the flesh, then this only means you are not prosperous or successful because your mind is not in line with the word. That is why you are where you are. It is only when you allow your mind to believe what the word of God says about you that we are successful. Depends upon where you take the success. You say you need a job. You see, you know, you know, oh, you know you're success, no, so, successful now. You're sick. And you believe God and pray. You see healing come. You have luck and you believe God and pray. You see, needs meet. That's success. That's a kingdom of God manifesting through your life. That is success. A, as I said before, there's a lot of people with money. And their money can't bring no healing to them because they can't save them, they can't buy their healing. But we who are in God must know that we have all things available. Our healing is ready, our deliverance is ready, and our prosperity is ready. They are all in God. All in store for us in our spirit, man. Now, you say you need a job and God, and God get you the job. But how do you serve? If the Lord is with you, then you are prosperous. Even when you, you, you hear everybody murmuring about it, do not allow yourself to be a part of these people. But like Joseph, allow yourself to stand out different, no man? Because sometimes it's not that God no bless you, you know, but when you go in, you join the park. You go in and you join the park and you hear people and say, boy, a place and are ready, you know, because then if they're not ready, what make them stay? But then see you come now and they want to discourage you. And you join the pack and you, and you start suck up all of the negative. You start suck up what everybody else has said. And this is why I talk to my children all the time. Chrissy is in America working. And when she just goes, she, she was negative. She tell me, Mommy, how to work hard. I say, You listen to me and you listen to me well. Listen to me. me say, if, if anybody else up on the job site and do the work and never do it successfully, you can do it too. You will do it. You just need to get the hang of it. If she was just there maybe about a couple of days and she started telling me something. Well, if a negative person, something, but it's a good thing. So, you know, that simple. And I'm not a pushover when it commands. I sit her down and I said, listen to me and listen to me well. You can do it. You're just there for a couple of days. Sit down in it and learn it because you're, I know she, when we call her, she all right. She up on her own and she do well. And I said, do not sit down and allow those people to feed you a bunch of negative stuff. I remember the first day when she talked to me, she said, mommy, I'm in this place. And then said, Ebola city there nearby. I said, look here, you know, watch Ebola. Because when I send you up there, you're covered with fever, and with grace and with the blood. Do not watch anybody else around you because you're not like everybody else. Because God is with you. Understand who you are and serve. Because you're sent there to, be, to serve. Serve with grace. Serve with dignity. Do your job like you're doing it unto the Lord. And that's where you will get favor. You will get favor. But some people go in as an establishment and then join the pack and then serve slothfully and God make a way for them and they're not even know what because they're going and suck up all of the ne negativity. They lost out on what God gave to them. So we don't want to lose this morning. But we want to serve. Because all the Bible tells us we work in. So when we join ourselves to what we, we, we master, we must serve them. Which is our employer like we are served doing duty unto God. But how do you serve? You do your, you, 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 you do your work like you do it unto God. And you will tell nobody now, look, we do whatever you want to do. You will tell nobody not to talk to the people, then telephone and go up on the internet and do all kind of foolishness when you could have taken your time and do something positive. And do it from your heart. If the Lord is with you, then you are prosperous. Even when you hear everybody murmuring about you, you can know that you are not Limited at your occupation. You're not limited by what you do. It's not what you do that makes you a prosperous person is who is with you. 
And if you have God on the inside of you, you are not like everybody else who don't have God. You are different. So allow that God on the inside of you to shine out. Let that God who is on the inside of you be seen. Because not Lord Jesus, when God is being shining out of you, it is hard for you to go and notice. Somebody must notice you so you're different. I remember Chrissy coming back to me when she get the hang of it and she said, Mommy, everybody start like me now. And some people jealous. Some people have problems now. Because the grace of God begins to shine out. And she begins to do her stuff. And she begins to get favor. And people start get upset. But me said, don't worry about who I get upset. Because if God is with you, and if God is for you, nobody can be against you. They can talk, then talk, but they can't hurt you. Understand who you are. If God is with you, that's all you need. You need to trust God. Whatever comes along your way, whatever situation you go into, you can make it a prosperous situation because of who is with you. Hallelujah. The presence of Jesus is all that you need. Look at these guys who take the roof off the house to get into to where Jesus was. If then they just stay outside and say, look here, we can't go in. The man now go get no healing today. But these men realize that Jesus Christ, the healer, was in the house. And they make every attempt to go inside. Then climb up on the roof and take off the house. And then let in the sick man. Now that a fit. How much of us believe God like that? We know when we align our mind with the word, we get into the presence of Jesus. When we think like all the words say we think, when we allow the thinking to be coming out of our mind like the word, then we are in the presence of God. The very word that we speak out of our mouth, the Bible said it is life and it is light. So when we recite the word when situation come, what we are reciting into our situation is life to the deadness around us. Don't stop speaking the word of God. It is your source. It is what will keep you. Notice Jesus. Every time when the devil comes to tempt him, you think saying this is nothing else and go on like he can't perform then something there. Jesus could have well met this stone turn in a bread, but he did see him go on. So Jesus said, look here, man. Jesus, speak the word. Every time the devil tell him to do something, Jesus, speak the word. And so every time the enemy come to your mind, counter it with the word. That's why you have the word. Use the word. It is your weapon. It is what you fight with. If a word never come to you, then you don't have nothing for a lamp on. But God is so good that every time you're going to go in one situation, that's how we experience about God, you know. Anytime you're about to go into some deep water, he sends somebody with a word. And every time things look threatening, me have the word there because guess what? Me understand clearly, you know. So when God give a word, you know, you know, just give the word, you know, and give the devil too. So like Job, he said, all right, devil, go down there and touch Job. But guess what? No kill him. No touch in life. And as me say so many times, the devil, the, the, me get a word, say, I'm, I will not be put to shame. So the devil tell, just like what the devil tell Job, to go down there. So it is, he said, all right, devil, attack Sister Miller. Do what you want to do. But she will not come to any shame. You must not bring her to any shame. So all I want to have a quiet place in my life. And everything where I must stop up, you well know. Saying just I do there something there. Forget me for panic. Forget me for move. But I will not move because the word of God don't come to me that I'm not going to put to shame. I will not be put to shame. So me, every time when I go out with this style, I make me feel like I want fear. I make me feel like I start sweat. I say, look here. God said I'm not put to shame. You know? So if I say I'm not put to shame, as simple that you mean. His word cannot return to him void. And so me will on the word there. Me stand up panny, me lay down panny, me sleep panny, me rise with it, me live with it, me talk with it, me do everything with that confidence of the word. Because it's his word. He's not a man. He's not a man. We know when we align our mind with the word, we get into the presence. When we are in the presence of God, Things change. Stuff can't just destroy you because God is with you. I'm going to show you that it's up to you to stay with the presence. Romans 8 and verse 31. Let us look at that.
It's your responsibility to get into the word. If you understand that this is what I need in order for me to be prosperous, then you must take the time, make the time, whatever you do, you need to make the time to make sure so you are getting at the word of God. And it's not just to take up your Bible and read. You need to go places where you can be more edified. Look here, if you decide so you're going to be one teacher, you take yourself or you got teacher's college, don't it? So if you need a word, you have to do, you have to suck from every source where the word has come from. If you need a word of God, you go to the church, you go to the seminars, you go to the conference. Why do you think people take the time and follow, follow up this place? Because they need the word to push into their system, to push out fear and lies and the attacks of the enemy. That is why you spend the time to put the word in. That when something looks threatening, come, you go back to the word and refresh your mind, restore your soul. Restore your soul. Because you can't restore your soul to that. Say, all right, me read the Bible already. Me read a part there already, you know. And me hear what a part there say. And me, all right. No. When utter claps come, you need to read it over and over and over and over and over until it becomes a second sense. Until it becomes priority. Until the only thing you have left is the solid rock of the word. You can only benefit when you make the effort to get into the word. You can only benefit when you make the effort. This is your part now, you know. God do everything we need to do for mankind. But mankind must make the effort to feast. Him can't put it in your system. You need to take your time. You're so busy with everything what you do. But take a time out of your time for the word. Take a time or a day out of your busy schedule to attend church. Take some time away and hear what the word of God says and promise to you. And believe them and feast upon them and you will prosper. Hallelujah. Because when you're feasting on the word, what you're doing, you're restoring your mind. So when attack clubs come up and everything come up, you have the word. You're not empty. That is why the world keep fears so much. Because they don't have no word. That is why the word, world is in a problem. As they could sickness take them over your ears, so then they're then dead. Because they don't have no word. They can't fight. Because our weapon is the word. Our weapon is the word. That is how we fight. Hallelujah. And so Romans 8. And verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for you, who can be against you? Hmm? And that is what you need to know all, at all times, that God is with you. As a son of God, God is with you. And if you are an of God can be with you when you allow him to be with you. He wanted to come in, and that is why he sent Jesus to make it necessary for you to come in. But you are still believing a lie. You are still where the enemy is because you have not surrendered your life. And as long as your, your life is not surrendered, the devil can come and have an eight day a night and do anything he wants. It's just the mercies of God out of your few generations where I pray for you while some of us are still alive. Because prayer has been sent up. But you need to, to take yourself from where you are. And plant yourself in the presence of God by giving your life, by surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. Because outside there is no safe. Because outside there, the devil says his duty is to go to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. You know what he says? Seek. So religion tells you that God is for you when you do good. But when you do bad, he's not. But God is for you all the time. So today you might fall as a Christian. You might make a mistake or you might drop. That no means that God left you. In don't vouch in our word that he will never leave you nor forsake you. As a son, as a father, he'll always be there. You will still hear that still small voice crying out to you to come back. He's never going to leave you. If God left you when you do bad, who are going to help you if you stop do bad? 
If God left you when you're in your trouble, who are going to help you to come out of your trouble? Come on! We need to quit this religious mindset and stop telling people say the good what they do. Make God there with them because I know it. The Bible said no good, no works of man can save man. So it's no good thing that man do. Why God is with man. It's all about what Jesus did for man. Why man can have the blessings of God into their lives. And so we need to quit our religious practice. We need to stop thinking say the good them when we do save me. And the good them when we do make me change. It's not about you. It's never about you. It's all about Jesus Christ and his love. If he did not went to the cross and give up his life for a ransom, you couldn't even come say Abba. Because when Jesus Christ never shed in blood, we were far. We were enemies of God. We were not friends with him. And it's not why we were saved that he did this. He did it when we were enemies to him. He made it up in his own mind that he's going to forgive mankind. And he went to the cross. He did what was necessary. He looked beyond our faults. And he see that mankind cannot do anything good to deliver themselves. He saw that mankind could not live by the law to save them. And that's why Jesus come. So I need nobody to come remind me about the Ten Commandments. I need nobody to come remind me about the keep no Sabbath holy. I need nobody to come tell me which food feed and which food not to eat. Because Jesus paid it all. It's not about me doing anything to justify myself anymore. It's about what Jesus did. Now what Jesus did, I receive it, I accept it, and I'm clinging to him. You see, when you not accept what Jesus do, you become religious. And you do one holy patrol modification is to justify yourself. And your works, and you do all of this something then what you think people used to do in the old time days, in the day of the law. Because you still tell yourself, say, how will you do? Save you. No, man. If we do could have saved you, then Jesus Christ did not need to come. But man can't please God with their natural self. Man can't fulfill the law. Me and my mother talk about say better for the still under the law. Under the law do what? The Bible says if you miss what you're guilty at all. How could you be, be, be in a better state under the law when you couldn't keep the law? You were given a holy law, a perfect law, and you never perfect. Man that is full of flaw, mistake, loss, all of them something they can't fulfill the law. And so this morning I'm glad for Jesus. I'm glad that we are not under the law anymore. No, you can't still stay under the law. If you choose to stay under the law, you can't stay underneath it. Because as long as you under the law, you are living under a curse. Because as long as you can't keep the law, then curse is going to be upon your life. And when curse comes, you're going to come down with sickness and disease and pressure. And all kinds of sickness are going to attack you because that's what curse do. But when you are, have accept Jesus Christ for what he is and what he did for you, then you are going to depend only on his grace. You are going to say, Father... I'm a sinner. I can't do nothing to make myself righteous. But I thank you for sending Jesus Christ. That through him, I can be saved. Through him, the Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What is he saying? Believe on the works that Jesus did for you. Accept your notes that this is your salvation. I know what you do for yourself. And what Jesus did for you that makes you whole. You are make righteous by Jesus' works. And on nothing we do make you righteous. So you know what? I can proudly stand. And I can proudly say I am the righteousness of God. All when me I make mistake tomorrow morning, I can declare it because I know my work saved me. It's his work. I am made righteous. And nothing can move me out of righteousness. I am protected by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ straight place with me. And because he trade place with me, it no matter what happened in my life, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And if I, if I continue to have that mindset, and know, say, because he's with me, I'm a prosperous person, I will start to manifest it. But when me have a lock up in a religion, and things are the something them want me do, and I try to do something still. Me, I go feel every day and feel miserable and stay in a condemnation. And as long as you're in condemnation, man, 
you cannot live by faith. You will not be able to pray later that nobody has a deliverance take place because your mindset is in condemnation. You are things that you did sin yesterday. You did miss the mark. I'm God now go hear a prayer and that's a lie. Because understand this. When you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior of your life, the Holy Spirit steps in. Your spirit is made no. You are righteous and nothing can break that righteous spirit that you have now received. It is your mind that needs to be renewed you to manifest what is on the inside of you. And so because you do not renew no mind properly, you do not renew no mind with religious thinking, you do not renew no mind with, 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 with church philosophy and church rule and all kinds of something you don't use for renew no mind. But this morning you want to say to you, renew your mind with the word of God, not religion. Let all things steer which by all things today. This is the age of grace. Boss in our grace, boss in our mercy, boss in our favor. Because when they understand, see how Christ do. No show off, this no in there, you know, for you know, for do. And that is why you see um, some people no want to come out of works because they want they want to show off, see how they do save them. But listen to me, sister and brother. No works of man can save them. Receive Jesus Christ this morning and his love. Receive the grace of God and what Jesus did for you and be free. Receive Jesus Christ and exceed your circumstances. Receive the grace of God this morning and renew your mind and allow your mind to prosper and see prosperity come out of your life. Stop with your religious belief. That is not good because we are good. So we have to have the right mindset. We have to renew our mind with a word. When you know the Lord is on your side, dear can be no panic attack. So even though things are come against you, when you know, so you know, say so me have God. God is with me. I mean, no care what me eye them I look pan. I mean, no care what my senses them I tell me. God is with me, and He is not only with me, but He is for me. I remember when I was going through some situation, and a sister come to me in church, and the sister said to me, "Say, listen to me, sister Mila. God said, if He tell you, say, even if you did it wrong." He would have still back you because he's for you. Come on. Know this. In no matter what you do, God is for you as a child of God. God will not watch you be destroyed. He might go protect you. He might go deliver you. He might go save you. Just believe. And I'm not saying that you need to go out there and do and do and do because that is not the message that I'm sending. All I'm saying to you, when you get more aware of the presence of God that is on the inside of you, your attitude will change rather than when you live in a religious practice. Because all you do are conform to a set of rules and that not change nobody. New change starts from the inside of a man's heart. And so it better if you identify with who you are on the inside and make that bring the change out of you. Because a death of true change come. Change not come by conforming to rules. And so we conform to rules. I we do so something and say that I'm a salvation. I went to the trouble with everybody here. But when you are changed from the inside, hallelujah. When you understand who you are on the inside, and you begin to line up your mind with who you is on the inside. When people and trouble and trial come, you can stand the test of time. When people hate you, and when people use you, and when people do you all kind of hypocrisy, you can't forgive. Because the change where you get now and are from confirming are from God deliverance. You see, people are confirmed to a set of church rule, you know, and then keep malice like a war. Then not talk to them one another because I confirm, then confirm. But when the, when the love of God that is on the inside of you, when you are intertwined with that, you can't do like what you normally do. You're going to love your brother even though they hurt you. You're going to want to bring clarity. My God, times in the church or something happened, and you want to bring the two together to see if peace can come out of you. And I want to say, no, make it stay. Me, all right, me not hate nobody, you know, but me just can't. I hate your hate. Stop talk, so. Why you don't want peace come out of Eden? Why you don't want to ratify? Why you don't want to come to an end? Because you want to carry it. You want to worry. 
and you support the spirit of malice. And you open the door to it until the spirit of malice come in. And when he may come in, come alone because he may carry the spirit of murder with him. And you sit down and tell you why I murder the sister. Come on, you need to walk in the door and say, look here, me allow you to live in yourself for long. But Jesus Christ, because you died upon Calvary's cross, and you make it possible that mankind can be delivered from any miserable condition they face. It is your power, almighty God. It is your grace, almighty God, that I want you to channel to my heart. I want to stop eating this brother. I want to stop eating this sister. And so I tell it to you this morning, I open myself for freedom. Then the Holy Spirit will come and shed a brand new light. And he will give you the grace where you need to forgive. It's never by might nor by power. It's by the Spirit of God that you overcome. The church have taught so many of us. So by we want strength, we do something. And that is why we see people have practice. And I do all of the religious something there. Because they believe so they can't do it of their own self. But you can't serve God truly like you have to serve him without God. God give you grace to empower you to make him, to please him. What an awesome God. And so we need to come out of religion. We need to come away from it. We need to know God for who he is. And know that he's for us. No matter nobody tell us that God no, no like you and God no with you and God no this and God love everybody. And he's saying which above all that we prosper and be in good health. So it's our responsibility to get into the word of God and believe it. Walk it out, man. When you know that the Lord is on your side, here can be no panic attack. Even when you are in the midst of things that is not all right, you can have this confidence that God is with you. Let us look at Hebrews 13 and verse 5 before we go. Trying to wrap up here. And so if God is with us, who can be against? Hmm? Nobody. Because you can't fight God. And so I mean, no matter what people are saying about me at times and what people are do, I want to do my all assured to Jesus. They say, God, you know not make them dis destroy me. And as long as you are with me, I can't have peace. I can't sleep at night time. I can't rest. Hallelujah. I don't have no headache. If I tell you no, Half of we are going on my life right now, no, that shock. But God is with me. And because he's with me, I have peace. <clears throat> Verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be consent with such things as he have. For he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So this is his assurance. God not leaving you. It's not like what religious people tell you, that the Spirit of God does not always strive with man. That was in the day of the whole, when the Holy Spirit used to come down and sit down upon some people like Moses, Elijah, and their man there. They would have come down for a time, yes? They would have come down for a time and sit down upon them and do what want to do upon their life and show forth some miracle and bring back some dead. And you name the awesome things that those old people in the past did. But under the dispensation of grace, where Jesus Christ gave up his life as a ransom for mankind, once you receive the Holy Spirit, he's not going away. He's with you. He's with you. Once you receive him, he's saying, I'll leave you. A theme word, sister, he can't deceive you. And if he not leave you, the only thing you have to try to do, is get to know about who is with you. Get to know more and more about him. Because the more you know, you see, and knowledge and power, you know? Knowledge is the power that you need to live this life effectively. The more you know about the God that is with you, the more prosperous you will be. So the enemy can't afford for you to know about it. And so he dash all kind of distraction at you to keep you away from the word. And then give you a whole heap of something to do to keep you away from the word. But I want to say to you, stay in the word of God. Because if, you do, if your mind don't prosper where the word is concerned, then you will not prosper. God bless you this morning. Have a blessed day. And know this. As your mind prosper, so you shall prosper. 
Get into the word of God and get all the knowledge and the information that you need. Because it's when you get the revelation knowledge of the truth of God that you can stand flat-footed and fight the enemy. Fight. Don't give up. Stay the course and see God break through for you. Bless you. I want you to help me welcome the Cole Binion tonight. Come on. Call her your life. Blessing, sister. Morning, blessing, sister. How you deserve? I'm Devon from England. I tell you, that's a powerful word this morning. Thank you very much. Bless your brother. Bless you and thanks for calling. I'm telling you, sister. I feel, I feel it. And I feel it. So through the words. All right, brother. You know the anointing. We need, we need, we need more people like you for preach the word to people. Yes, man. That's true. That's true. And may God bless you to keep preaching the word. Bless you, brother, and thanks for calling. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Yeah, same to you. Bye. It's a fountain for my pool of grace for my that flows from Emmanuel's veins. Call your life. Good morning. Good morning, sister. I said the same to you that man, ma'am. God bless you and go ahead and strong this morning. As you shall. Who is it? Sister Joy or Sister Dawn? Lorna. 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 Okay, Lorna. Bless you. Thanks for calling. Come, all right. And it healed me, it came and refreshed me, it came and washed my sins away. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad. Oh, yeah. Carla, good morning. Yes, good morning. Is this the pastor? Yes, ma'am. Oh, good morning. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, my God, I enjoy your messages so much. Just by chance, I've been working some overtime, working overtime, and I happened to turn, tune into stars and um, hear you um, praying and um, preaching. And I'm telling you, uh, this is what I used to when I was back home. And um, I want to know, how can I get these um, messages? You can um, go to YouTube. All the messages are there on YouTube. All the messages on YouTube? All the messages. You just go to YouTube and, st and type in Light in My World with Victoria. Light in My World with Victoria? Right. Okay, let me, let me just get a pen and write that down. Oh, my God. I have to, I have to listen to these messages over and over again. Yeah, man, they will strengthen you. Really, they will. Oh, yeah, definitely. So just keep up the good work and just continue to do what you're doing because, you know, we need the word, not empty promises. Every day you get to church and you hear these, you know, people telling you you're going to get this, you're going to get that. In order for you to get this and that, you have to do what God says. So right, you have I a really part. appreciate these words. Bless you, my sister. Oh, my God. You have a blessed day. You too, sweetheart. Have a good one. Be safe and bye.
caller, you're live. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Veronica. That was a powerful word message this morning. Bless you, sweetheart. I'm glad it blessed yes, your heart. Very powerful. Yes. Be blessed. Okay, sister. Thanks for calling. Have a blessed day now. You too, brother. Yo, this is the Styles FM. Crossover Mondays, every Mondays from 5 to 9 p.m. And at the rule of this, I may have said this. Whether you're interested in extracurricular activities or academics, turn up the radio from 5 to 9 p.m. every Monday. <laughs> yes, on the fourth day. Styles FM. Please, please. Is your BlackBerry sick? Dr. Beeberry will diagnose and repair your BlackBerry in short order. Call the doctor at 978-3119. Ask about our convenient drop-off centers at 978-3119. Dr. Beeberry has the remedy. Captain Baker in the building. Be wowed with Watch Captain out. Baker on Wow Factor. Mondays and Tuesdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's informative, educating, and entertaining. Wow. I feel good. Put the joy of entertainment in your ears. Be a part of the 